Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. These days everything is powered by batteries. We've got uh, battery powered smartphones, tablets, laptops. Uh, we have uh, battery powered cordless power tools, cordless walkie mowers, cordless riding mowers, uh, battery powered uh, cars. Everything's powered by batteries. Now, um, there's kind of a secret that makes these things work, because if you, if you look at, say, like one of these power tools, like this is a corded Makita angle grinder, it's extremely powerful, it's 840 watts, it'll cut through anything for hours on end. That one's corded, you plug it into the wall. This guy is a Makita brushless, cordless angle grinder, it's got a battery pack on here, and uh, it works pretty well for a few minutes, and then the battery kind of gets tired and it slows down, and eventually it just stops to prevent the damage to the battery and the motor. And, uh, now, the thing is, if this guy is 840 watts, uh, you look at this guy and you go, okay, he's 18 volts, 4 amp hour. Well, you do the math, and that's like 40 plus 32, it's 72 watts. But, hang on, this is 840 watts. This, according to the battery, is 72 watts, so this guy's like 11 times more powerful or whatever. Like, how does that work? Um, right. The same is true if you look at lawnmowers, as we'll see in a second, and you're going like, wait, the power just, like, the, the numbers just don't add up here. So, but of course you know that, like, you know, your neighbor has an electric riding mower and he can cut his lawn for 45 minutes, and uh, you're, you might have an electric car and it's like a Tesla and it does 0 to 60 in, like, 1.2 milliseconds, and you go, right, that requires horsepower. And yet you look at the numbers in the battery and you're going like, this doesn't, this doesn't work. You know, 840 watts. 72 watts, huh? Right, it turns out that there is a secret to all this wonderful battery technology. Now, in order to understand the secret, we're going to have to do a little bit of math, but don't cry because it's very, very simple. So, the first thing we're going to consider is a walkie lawnmower like this one. Uh, these typically have a single battery pack. So, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have a 56 volt 10 amp hour battery pack. That's a little bit big for a walkie mower, but let's just go with it. It'll simplify our numbers when we're looking at our riding mower. So 56 volt pack rated at 10 amp hours. If you do 56 times 10, you get 560 watt hours. That means the battery will, pr will, will produce 560 watts for a maximum of one hour. Okay, but we also know that 560 watts divided by 746 watts uh, by the way, it's 746 watts is equal to 1 horsepower. That's imperial. The metric horsepower is 735. Right, don't get lost. It's like a, you know, British, you know, American, rest of the world, whatever. I use 746 watts because I was born in America. It's a 1% difference. Right, 746 watts. 560 watts, if it's 746 watts per horsepower, 560 divided by 746 is equal to 0 0.75, 3 quarters horsepower, which means you get 3 quarters horsepower for one hour. Now you're probably going, hang on a minute, if we're talking about a walkie lawnmower, uh, typically a good one is like 3 horsepower, 4 ho horsepower, good ones are 4.5, 5 horsepower, so how on earth are you going to cut the grass well um, if you're only getting 3 fourths of a horsepower? Like, that's not enough. And in fact, this problem is even worse if you talk about a riding lawnmower like this one. Because in this case, what we end up with is six of these 56 volt 10 amp hour battery packs. So that would be 0.75 horsepower times six. We get four and a half horsepower for one hour. Now, again, a riding mower should have something like 15 horsepower, preferably 20 horsepower or more, sometimes 25, 27 horsepower. Um, Four and a half horsepower is not enough for, uh, like, you know, mowing several acres on a riding mower. So what actually is going on here? Well, we have to consider this thing called C rating. Now, what the C rating of a battery is, is essentially the, uh, the, the rate at which you can charge and discharge the battery. Now, charging and discharging, it gets complicated because typically uh, it's hairy. It depends on the battery chemistry. It depends on the specific design of the battery internally. But for simplicity's sake, we'll just say um, the C rate is the rate at which you can charge and discharge the battery. So let's take our same battery and let's say, okay, it's a 10 amp hour battery with a 1C rating. That's what it's labeled with, the 1C rating, 10 amp hours. That means it can provide 10 amps for one hour. But if that same battery has a 2C rating, it can supply double the current, but for only half the time. So double the current, 10, 10 amps times 2, gives you 20 amps. But the time that it can provide that increased current is cut in half from half an hour 
to down down to 30 minutes. And if it's a 4C battery, you get four times the current, 10 times four is 40 amps, but for only 15 minutes, one fourth of an hour. Similarly, you can go on and you can say 8C and uh, that would give you uh, whatever, 80 amps for seven and a half minutes. And uh, many, many lithium polymer batteries, they go up as high as 100C. So you can pull tons and tons of juice for them without causing the battery to overheat and explode. Okay, well, like, why is this important? Well, if we go back to the example of our riding mower, instead of 1C batteries, let's say we have 4C batteries. 56 volts, 10 amp hours, there are 6 batteries, but this time instead of 1C, they're 4C. So what does that give us? 56 volts times 40 amps times 6, that's equal to 13,440 watts. Well, if you divide 13.44 kilowatts by 746 watts per horsepower, you end up with 18 horsepower but only for 15 minutes. So now we begin to understand why it is that this tool can cut very well, but for a very short amount of time, and then it slows down and it's much weaker, or you're riding lawnmower, it'll cut really good, and then the battery starts to get low, and it's like, yeah, I'm a little, you know, kind of a slacker. Or, for example, your electric car. Let's take a look at that. So let's assume we have a generic electric car here that looks strikingly like a Tesla, and it has a battery pack that's 300 volts, 250 amp hours. Well, 300 volts times 250 amp hours is equal to 75 kilowatt hours. So this is a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, okay, well, if we take 75,000 watt hours and divide by 746 watts per horsepower, we end up with approximately 100 horsepower for one hour. Now, 100 horsepower for a car, like, yeah, I used to have like a Chevrolet Cavalier with an inline four-cylinder and it was 95 horsepower. It was not a hot rod, right? So, right, aren't Teslas the cars that accelerate from zero to 60 in like one nanosecond? Right. Okay, but let's take a look at it again, this time with a 4C battery pack. With a 4C pack, instead of 100 horsepower for one hour, you get 400 horsepower for 15 minutes. And similarly, if it was an 8C battery pack, you'd get 800 horsepower for seven and a half minutes, or 16C? Uh, 1600 horsepower for three minutes, uh, whatever. The point is that when you have these lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries, they use specific batteries and engineer them in such a way that you can pull a whole ton of current from them, many times the rating, and in so doing, you increase the horsepower. You increase the amount of power you get out of that battery pack, but only for a very short amount of time. So sure, you can get in your Tesla and you can drive your dad and do zero to 60, like, you know, to your heart's content, but not for very long, because when you do that, you're sucking so much juice out of the battery that you won't be able to make it to the grocery store. Right. Also, uh, as it turns out, uh, electric powered vehicles use certain tricks. For example, with a riding lawnmower, you have two electric motors driving the rear wheels. Then you may have three blades cutting the grass, and each blade is powered by an independent electric motor. Well, if your grass is like short and it gets long over here, only the rightmost blade has to be driven at a, at a higher speed with more power. Uh, so you drive that right blade faster and instead of, uh, with a normal lawnmower, all the belts are usually in interconnected by a belt and driven from a single wheel connected to the engine, which means, okay, well, if one, one blade gets bogged down, they all get bogged down and the engine just revs up and dumps tons more power at all three blades. Um, with using little tricks like this, since each blade is independently powered by an independent motor, uh, you can save energy. Uh, it's, it's more efficient. So there are certain tricks that they use like that, including in electric cars, that also increases the battery life. Now, the fact is that current battery technology has about half the energy density of gasoline, which is really bad when you think about it. And in fact, um, also current batteries are, I think, one third the energy density of uh, diesel fuel. Now, you might say, well, hang on a minute here, Scotty, because uh, I read that um, when a, you burn diesel fuel, like a diesel-powered car, two-thirds of the energy is wasted in things like heat, so I don't want to waste two-thirds of that energy, right? So you go, well, that's why I got an electric car. Well, as it turns out, uh, in the year 2021, I believe it was 63% of Earth's electricity was generated from, two-thirds of Earth's electricity was generated from burning fossil fuels coal, oil, and gas. Which means if you live in two-thirds of the world and you get an electric car, you're not actually greening anything because what you're doing is instead of having your car with a diesel engine where you burn that diesel and you're wasting two-thirds of it in heat and whatever, 
uh, you're actually taking the burning of that fuel and you're pushing it off to the power company and saying, hey, you burn it for me and then feed me extra electricity so that I can charge my electric car. It doesn't actually make anything more green. It just kind of, you know, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Well, the problem is over there, so now I can, you know, feel holy. Well, no. Uh, now you might say, well, but Scotty, don't you live in France and don't they have like 56 or something electric uh, nuclear power plants rather? Yeah, they do. But even there, in a country like France, you still have a problem because if we all decide to switch over to electric cars overnight, uh, the power company, they're, they're already, they already need 56 reactors to produce 70% is consumed by the country, the other 30% excess they sell to other European countries. If everybody overnight switches to an electric car, they're going to have to install many more nuclear reactors just to generate all the energy that comes in that gasoline and diesel fuel. So, um, yeah, like diesel and gasoline are extremely energy dense and it's actually, uh, you, you got to get that energy from somewhere. And as I've talked about in previous videos, people say, yeah, solar and wind, you know, ask Britain about that. They install a bunch of, you know, wind farms and then they go, oops, the wind didn't blow. Our wind farms didn't generate enough electricity. We've got to like, you know, burn coal or whatever. Um, you know, if you have solar and the sun isn't shining because the weather changes, you're kind of in trouble. <laughs> so... But anyway, I digress. Uh, the fact is that uh, right now, uh, battery technology, like, it's, it's good, but it's not quite there yet, in my opinion. It's like, um, right, if I can, you know, mow the lawn for, like, a good 40 or 45 minutes, that's not really long enough. Um, electric cars, they have great acceleration. They have, you know, pretty good range, but you have the problem of charging, you have the problem of, you know, needing to upgrade the electric grid, which is very old in many countries anyway. You need to, you know, almost double it so to supply enough juice to charge everybody's cars in many places. Like, that's crazy. That's very costly. Uh, and, of course, you need to produce more electricity and it ain't coming from green sources. So, um, as time goes on, yes, we will have better battery technology and it will become more practical. Uh, but you still have this problem of, like, where are you getting your energy from? So, uh, but in any case, uh, now you understand the secret to these battery-powered gizmos and how it is that this guy, this cordless guy with this winky little battery pack, can actually compete with this guy, but only for a short amount of time. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.